My response is, is both a mix of what to what you just said and what I've been reading. So excuse me to those. If some of it's more about from from what. From Closer. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> As I was thinking of what to say, I wanted to start with the opening. Uh, before I start, I'd like to say something, which I think is such a funny opening because it reminds me that we have these multiple eyes. And I feel like I have two, at least two eyes in response to listening to you. And I wanted to represent them. One of them uh, really strongly resonates as an intellectual history background and appreciates the journey through Kant and, and Habermas and Foucault and seeing myself as a real product of that lineage and appreciating that peace is a moral discourse and learning how to um, appreciate difference in a, in, a, in a different way. Um, and that intervention is, is problematic for all the reasons that you've described to us. And while I'm doing this and I'm with you, <laughs> I have this other eye that keeps speaking up and saying, uh, if there were, if I were faced with a with a genocide and I felt like I had some material way to intervene, that I would hope that I would do something to stop the killing, knowing that you might call me a hegemon, <laughs> and taking hope, hoping in a way that I would still take that risk, and my, you know, almost in a way that I would, <laughs> I was thinking I would throw myself on a in front of a tractor that was about to kill the last panda habitat, you know. If, even if I spent the rest of my days trying to change our discourse around how we relate to the planet and, it, and its creatures. So I wanted to ask you about if there's a place in your theory for any kind of stopping of an intervention that's not hegemonic, or am I just going to be left with that uh, uncomfortable difference <laughs> um, within myself of, of um, having to play those two, um, or the terrible choice, I guess, and hoping that I'm never faced with that terrible choice. Okay, this is um, this is both. Can you hear me out there? Okay, um, this is both your question and the question I got when I was uh, being picked up from my hotel by Patrick over there. <laughs> uh, Patrick's been very hospitable. He's also given me a bit of a hard time, you know, and that hard time. Uh, you know, for good reason, comes from the fact that, um, for those of you who don't know Patrick, uh, he hails from Rwanda. And the response to the Rwandan genocide was actually a kind of politics of indifference when it was happening. Because to have labeled what was going on in Rwanda as a genocide would have invited uh, some sort of intervention. Right. So, um, so under what conditions you're asking would I, let's say, sanction uh, intervention? Now it's very interesting that uh, every intervention that's taken place, purportedly in the name of human rights, has in a sense responded to the crisis situation. But if you look at the archives of the conflicts that we have intervened in, for example, in the Balkans, if you look at those archives, actually the crisis situations were happening much before our interventions came about. Much before. In Kosovo, not just the uh, incarceration of the whole population, right? In, in, in that region by the Milosevic regime, but also the active expulsion of the Kosovars from every institution of society, including universities. Now, why weren't there interventions then? There were calls for intervention, but not of the military kind. There were calls to uh, empower the Kosovan political uh, representatives who were there, right? Um, to provide, for example, financing for universities and grants and, and so on and so forth. Why didn't we intervene then? 
why do we assume that the crisis situation is that which we determine is the crisis situation? In relation to Rwanda especially, my response to Patrick was, when, when he was asking, well, what do you do when there's a genocide going on? We knew that that genocide would go on. There were a number of signals that could have been read that suggested that one side was targeting the, the other exactly in those racialized terms. In other words, terms that rendered the other expendable. So, um, secondly, intervention would have meant once again the direct targeting of the po very populations that were being subject to violence. Those who advocate intervention suggest that violence might be responded to with even more violence. Because populations are expendable. But only certain populations are seen to be expendable. And we have to look at that. Why is it that we so readily resort to military forms of intervention? So I can't see that I would actually ever advocate a police, a global kind of policing process that um, undermines the potentials of the post-colonial society evolving into a political society, a society wherein politics can happen. Now, uh, there's much by way of, uh, if you like, the corruption of what a sovereign state should do. A sovereign state is about providing for the welfare of its population. Within the European context, the European Union was formed and imagined exactly on the basis uh, of the state as having responsibility for the provision of welfare. What is the European Union? The European Union is about the welfare state, but now supranationally organized. That's the secular state. That's what the state should be about. Um, but it's not about, in a sense, manifesting that state through violence. That never works. In my view, it does not work because you're inevitably targeting the very populations who are subject to violence, who are indeed the victims of violence. This is why the Syrian opposition, the non-violent opposition, is absolutely against intervention. The Afghan women's movement is against the presence of our troops in that country. Their feminist movement that existed clandestinely, secretly, argued against intervention even when that intervention at the very beginnings, when the collapse of the Taliban regime was an inevitability, and that's how they understood it. Now, despite the daily dangers, the daily crises that the women of that country experienced, they were still against intervention because they knew the consequences to their own population and their own societies of intervention. So that's my, that's my answer to that.